Greetings, 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 vessels of the Most High. It's time to crusade with Minister Change on the podcast, Change of Life Testimonies from Sinners to Saints. Life is a testimony. God is good all the time. Be thankful for today, but y'all, we got to let tomorrow take care of itself. Amen, amen, amen. i like to welcome my guest, spiritual advisor, music man, big prophet, to the Change of Life Testimonies from Sinners and Saints. What's going on, fam, fam? Tell me how you feeling tonight, bro, bro. And I feel great, man. God is awesome. Worthy to be praised, brother. How are you? Hey, man, look, brother, I can't, com I can't complain at all, brother. It's a pleasure for me and you to be in Atlanta to live in, bro, and awesome. um, have, it, have this good conversation, brother. Hey, yes. man, but um, well, I'm going to go ahead and hit you with this, man. We're going to start off, man. We got to let the people know, man. Where are you from, man? Where was you born and raised, brother? Beeham, Alabama, home of the 205. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh -huh. Nick, uh, you know, temptations, all that good stuff, man. So Y'all ain't know all the people, all those people's from there, man. But that's where I'm at. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Be him, be him, be, be, be yeah, him, and how? Yes, sir. All right, all right brother. All right, brother. Home with Martin Luther King Jail. No, I'm just kidding. That is where the jail at. But uh, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, that's that, that, that most definitely some history right there. Hey, yeah. brother. I'd like to know, man, do you have a favorite Bible scripture, man, or something you like to go to, man, in a time of need? Uh, yeah, Matthew 11, 12. The kingdom of heaven suffer violent, and the violent take it by force. Amen, amen, brother. Brother, brother, that is a good scripture. Hey, yeah. man, you know, well, would you being a spiritual advisor, man, I mean, to the stars and everything, man, is there any any anything in your life, man, that you wish that you could go back and redo? Any incidents or anything, man, that you ever look back on and say, man, Wow, if I could change that day. Man, oh my God. Uh, of course, uh, the world knows my brother uh, just recently passed. Uh, I'm sharing it with you pre pretty much probably, pre probably the first time. Well, in, in, in depth, the way I'm probably going to do tonight, I'm, I've had an opportunity to grieve and, you know, come to a better place with the situation. Uh, a lot of the world knows that I was the one that was there. When my brother Earl Simmons, aka DMX, died, um, and um, uh, that was that was a very tragic situation for me mentally, you know. And so, uh, it's a brother that I love dearly and, and and truly miss, man. And I know the world do too. Great big heart, loving uh, father, husband, you know what I mean. So um, that's I, I wish I could go back to that moment, man, and really recognize maybe possibly some signs that I possibly missed. I don't know, uh, mm -hmm. because a lot of the things that he and I were talking about, of course, I was there days uh, before he died. And um, there was just never any awareness of of him leaving Earth because he was yes. a great spirit uh, on the actual day and so forth. And uh, we spent time together and man had fun with his fiance, Desiree Lindstrom. And, son exodus which y'all you guys know from him uh he's always with him and uh he actually named his last album after exodus uh and so i just wish i could go back man and and, and see if there was something that i may have missed where uh, that was some sort of sign and, and i know within probably there probably isn't but this mm -hmm. is just in hindsight i just wish there was something i could do man to uh bring him back but but on the same note i know he's in a better place uh, my brother Amen. was tired, uh, and um, I know his soul was right, and that's what matters. That's what matters. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Hey, good word. Good word. Hey, brother, do 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 you think, man? You know, we you know we have our faith in God, but do you believe sometimes being in that entertainment environment? Do you think that creates some demons that is sometimes hard to shake, man? Like they just like start grieving your spirit once you get to a certain point in life. Mm -hmm. Me and X would have that conversation sometime, and of course, I spiritualize on some other celebrities like Timo from Goody Mob and uh, Lil Zane, and uh, I prayed with many artists uh, and have spoken into their lives, like Young Jock and Waka Flocka and Lil Boosie and uh, a lot of these different people. And in some of the conversations that I have with different ones, uh, they all speak about uh, you know different things that they've tapped into, and, and I see. Uh, simultaneously, a lot of them deal with a lot of the same things. Um, of course, not enough time here to go into desperate detail, but yeah, uh, definitely, yeah. according to your question, there are other things that they fall into. And I think 
fact that they are celebrities and so forth, it just makes it easier uh, for them to to get to go deeper into the sin that's probably already bubbling in their spirit. You know what I mean? And yeah, if they get yeah. introduced to it, they're also able to move deeper into the to the, to the sea with it because you know of, of their um, uh, what am I trying to say? Their involvement or you know, yeah, yeah, their, their, their celebrity status. Right, they're, they're, able to, they're, they're able to access. A lot of stuff that you know, that's the yeah, word yeah. I for because yeah, of their yeah. access. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, most definitely, brother. Good word, good word. Hey, brother, do you think like uh, you know, also your environment, man, your childhood upbringing? Do you think that plays a part of having a stronghold on you as you are trying to advance to different levels in life? My childhood having a stronghold, definitely, definitely. Grew up with just a mom, no father. Uh, mm -hmm. grew up seeing my mother struggle uh, and begin to tap into other things and and and, and kind of like what we're talking about with the uh, celebrities and so forth, pretty much the same thing, just on a different level. I uh, ended up gang banging and selling drugs when I was younger and, uh, and, and, and painted it as if it was something that I was doing to help my mom or because she was struggling. You know, we, we, we use that as an excuse pretty much because a, a lot of people that's been in that world and understand what yes. I say. It becomes a thing where really uh, it becomes greed. Uh, out yeah, of all yeah. that, me going into it because I seen my mama struggle. You know, I wanted my family to do better. And when I yeah. started selling the drugs, honestly, I, I didn't use it for that purpose. I mean, I would yeah. help my mom out and stuff. It ain't like I went and bought her house and moved her out and got her. You know, yeah. I didn't do all of that. You know, it became more of a greed thing. And yeah. that, same, that same greed ended up getting me caught up and busted and facing 20 years in prison. So, yes. Definitely, Man. childhood had a lot to do with that. The lack of having uh, proper uh, guidance from a, a fatherly figure, uh, and, and I don't want to make that as an excuse. I know a lot of yeah. us have grown up in households without fathers, and, and a lot of us yes, come sir. out of mind. And shouts out to the single moms that has done their best, but mm -hmm. they, they can never be a father. But amen, amen. You know, I, I want to give them their props for sticking in there and doing their best. Uh, and so, but every child needs that, especially every male child and, and young lady too, because she needs to know how, how she should be treated by a man and so forth. So again, a whole nother issue, uh, but, but definitely to answer your question. Yes. It definitely amen. happened on my life. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Good word, brother. Good word. Big prophet, brother. You putting it down, putting that knowledge out there, man. Absolutely. Now, brother, Absolutely. This right here, brother is the testimony moment, brother. Okay. What life event, man, when, where, how, and what made you finally say, man, you know what? This is enough. I got to turn my life over to the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. if I want to survive out here in these streets, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> for me, man, uh, again, living like that, growing up in that way, uh, again, being from Birmingham, uh, like I said, when I started, man, two uh, had a, uh, two brothers, two sisters, so it was a total of five of us, and just seeing my mom struggle, and it got okay. so bad. And I know that a lot of your audience can relate to what I'm about to say. Uh, you know, when, when you have that many children in the house, man, and we counted two, three years apart, and, you know, single mom, she was working and doing all that she could do, man. Uh, and so, but even still, her doing the best she could do was, um, I don't want to say it wasn't good enough, but... Uh, at this, in the same breath, I want to say it didn't fulfill everything that needed to be fulfilled. So there were times, man, that we went without water. <laughs> we went without yes. gas. God forbid if we had a phone on. That means we had hit the lotto or it was income tax season or something. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Uh, Believe you know, me, bro, I man, understand. Just being real, man, I remember a time, man, it got so tight in the house, man, that, man, you know, and, you know, kids, we just eat. You know, mom go get the food stamps. Mama go mm -hmm. buy the Man, we run through them groceries in a week. Five of us, yeah. come on, man. You know, that don't last long. <laughs> no, know? that's the big boy. Five, we five kids. Yeah, bro. I grew up in the real struggle, man. I, I, I make a joke all the time. Like, boy, you're telling these kids nowadays when I go and perform all around the world, I tell them, I said, boy, I had to check the crowd out. I said, how many of y'all remember? <laughs> I said, how many of y'all remember that time? You know what I'm saying? When, when, when you had to uh, 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 make cheese toast out of that big old thick block of cheese. And hey, I remember. <laughs> you put the cheese on, on the bread and, and, you, and you try yeah. to melt it, but it don't melt. It just get the bread greasy. And then, <laughs> and then I really get on with this one. I said, I said, I said, okay. I said, if that didn't get y'all, 
I said, how many of y'all remember that can of peanut butter, that white can of peanut butter with all that said on it was peanut butter, and you peel the top off of that thing, and there's so much grease on the top, you got to stir it up to make it creamy, and then you put it on the bread, you try to put it on the bread, and you know what it do, change, what it do? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, no, it don't hold. Yeah. Tear the bread up. Tear the bread up. Tear the bread up. Peanut butter's so thick, it tear the bread up. So, yeah. you know, yeah. so I make those jokes, man. But those were some rough times, and some of us still got that powder milk on top of the refrigerator. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. But see, hey, hey, but, you know, man, I survive. <laughs> survive, brother. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so those are the times I grew up in, man. And like I said, seeing my mama struggle and with mm-hmm. that lights on. And I remember one particular time, man, it got so bad, man. It, it, and, and these are true stories. Uh, the lights used to be off, man. We, me and my brothers, now we used to go out and catch like we take the pickle jar and we mm-hmm. everybody would catch light bulbs and put them. You remember the light man. bulbs? And the bulbs used to light up. I wonder where they yeah. I don't see them no more. But um, <laughs> uh, but we used to catch catch them light bulbs and everybody bring them together and put them in this pickle jar and that would be our light. We taking the city on the on the dresser, man, and that's what yeah. light the room up. And uh, and then one other time, I remember my oldest brother, man, Tom. He uh uh. We, we had got down on food so bad, all we had was like oatmeal, but our water wasn't on. So, man, we he caught rainwater to make oatmeal. Mm. Like so this is the way I grew up. And, and growing up like that, man, just made me, mm-hmm. even as a child, want to see my family do better, my life uh, to be in a better situation, man. And so uh, as I began to get older, my family got involved in selling drugs. And if you, people from Birmingham, they, they know my story, man. And, um, mm-hmm. uh, and so... Um, uh, I started out, my aunt, she adopted me away from my other siblings and my uncle, uh, her boyfriend at the time, uh, had a little handy pack store in an uh, area called Inslee, right by the brickyard. Uh, the project. Okay. And that was a real popular little corner store. And so she she used to take me up there to work with him every day and just kind of get me away from the, the, the grind of the household there. And uh, even as a child, I really don't remember having a real childhood because my uncle, he started trying to teach me to be an entrepreneur. So I remember going to council school, man. I would get out of school, go straight mm. to work, go straight to work. As soon as I walk in the store, he'd move out of the, out from in front of the cash register, sit in his little chair, and I'd stock the store and run mm. the register, and, you know, from 7 to 12. And what happened was my uncle ended up dying. And um, mm-hmm. that, was, that, was, that was my leadership right there, man. That was my role model. He was teaching me to be a man, an entrepreneur. And so mm-hmm. by this time, my brother and some of my cousins, we, they were all in the drug business, man, and um, doing very yeah. well um, on, on, on big levels. And um, and so I started just hanging around with them just innocently. I was rapping in and, uh, you know, I was yeah. starting, starting to anyway. And so I used to go around to where they was and just rap about how their girlfriends used to catch them with another girl and come and jump <laughs> on them in the parking lot and stuff. <laughs> and, uh, okay. and before I knew it, man, just by hanging around them, I ended up with a dope sack in my hand. Oh, and that ain't what yeah. I wanted to do. And but oh, I always stop in that story and I always tell people like, listen, no matter young, old, or indifferent, what you hang around is probably what you're gonna become. You have to be well, careful for, to hang around. Well you, well, you know that's that's that, that's that's first Corinthians fifteen thirty-three, man. Bad company go. corrupt bad company corrupt good people. Good character. <laughs> good character. That's yeah. right, man. Yeah, yeah. From, from that point, by the time I was sixteen. Because I started applying those entrepreneurial skills to me selling drugs. And if there's a such thing, I did very well doing that. Uh, hey. And um, by the time I was 16, I was one of the biggest, biggest drug dealers in the city, running drugs Man. in different states and so forth. Lived on my own, had a living in family, had a girlfriend, was raising four kids by the time I was 16. And Man, Man. this is my real life, Ooh. you know. And so I got busted facing 20 years in prison. I was in my cell. I cut through the store. I was in my cell. And I remember, man, just uh, uh, being in my cell and, and just started to talk to the Lord. And, and it's like God gave me visions of how my grandmother used to always tell me, baby, if you ever need anybody, call on Jesus. And here I am, this thug, ex gang banger, drug dealer, sitting up in lockup crying, you know what I'm saying? And, and, yeah, and yeah. crying out to God and, and, and trying to wipe tears back. And, and I know now it was God. God spoke to me and he inspired me to write a letter to the judge. So I wrote okay. this letter. And God began to show his hands for me as well. Uh, he used one of the guards that hated me because I used to start trouble and lock up. And uh, one of the guards that hated me ended up taking the letter to the judge. Oh, and man. So, Woo. Uh, you know, he, God said he'll make your enemy your foot stool, right? Yes, <laughs> so man. Amen. He, he Amen. was playing his word out, man, right before my eyes, man. And, uh, and the judge got the letter. I went to this little off-the-record room. 
And I just began to expound what I had wrote in the letter. I just kind of exposed myself and the things I had done and, and so forth. I didn't snitch on nobody but me and uh, just exposed the devil uh, in my life. And so uh, uh, the judge, she began to tear up and I started to think, I'm like, why is she crying? You know, I'm the one locked up. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, me. <laughs> Judge okay. Sandra Ross Storm, man, I think she's died. she died eventually, but I want to just say big shouts out to her, man, her family. And I made her promise, man, if she would uh, let me go, man, that I would come back and I would, you know, try to bring, uh, you know, be a, a guide to a lot of these other young people that was coming through the system and so forth. And I kept my promise. So long story short, she she overturned what would have been a 20 year sentence in my life. Man, I ended up doing six months, got out man, man and, and started revitalizing my life, man, and trying to do right by my family and, and these kids and got a job. And eventually uh, the same place that I worked for, the guy. I ended up running it at 16 when I got out and uh, talking okay. business. And then I ended up opening my own stores. There were some furniture stores called Beds for Less. I opened one. Uh, then I opened three more the next year. So I was 20 years old and I, I had man. four furniture stores. And so God just began to take my life to new heights, man. And I think it was because of my faithfulness and, and my loyalty to, to him and, and, and me um, actually allowing him to break my heart. Because the Bible said when you have a contrite heart, spirit and a broken heart, that's when God can deal with you. So I was at the point, man, where I needed God and nothing else. And that's what really brought me to the fact of, man, if God has done all this for me, I, mean, you know, I want to do it all for him. And when I did it, I wanted to do it right and be real about it. And I Amen. told God when I got saved, I told God, I said, if I could be real to the streets, I could be real to you. Amen. But, <laughs> but, but there was a but in there. I said, but God, and I was bold enough to say this. I said, but okay. God, you got to show me you for real. Okay. okay. I need to know you for real. I was bold enough to say that even then. And every okay. since then, God has done just that, man. So I have people come up to me all the time at this place in my life. Uh, and I thank God for the celebrity that I have and so forth. But people come up to me and, and, and it's been so the same for so many years. People, they ask me, man, how are you able to be the same all the time? And, I, mm -hmm. and it's always exciting to me to say, man, it's my relationship with Jesus. It ain't, about, it ain't about religion. You know what I mean? It ain't about church. Personal. It's my personal. personal relationship with God. And he constantly shows me who he is. He constantly speaks to me. He constantly leads guys and direct me. And man, that right there alone is what keeps me all the time. Amen. Yes. Amen, brother. Woo! Yeah. Big prophet, big prophet, brother. Woo! That was a good word, bro. You put it down, man. Yeah. You put it down. Yeah. That, that's a good word. That's a good word, brother. Thank hey, brother, we, we we know in our communities, man, we have a lot of uh, high crime rates, man. You think if there was a possibility that we had more community outreach programs and we had something that where we can kind of in, 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 uh, put accountability? Because I think a lot of the stuff that goes 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 on in our neighborhoods, I think the accountability is not there for, for, for some things that happens. I think we like overlook it. So what do you think about accountability, brother, and, and some type of community outreach centers or stuff that we could set up as as uh, as uh, I won't say shelters, but as uh, getaway and expression centers for for our youth that they can go and express themselves? Because a lot of the stuff that they do, man, it comes from hurt. When I was out there in the streets, a lot of mine was hitting hurt and I never got the chance to really deal with that hurt until I got old enough to find the Lord Jesus Christ. Bro. So do you have any any, any insight on that, brother? Well, I'm going to say this first, and I'm not scalding them, but I am scalding them. That should be the church, first yeah. and foremost. Uh, yeah. But because we failed in some of those areas, not all churches, I got to put that out there as well, but I'm yeah. going to talk about the church because I am the church. So yeah, I'm just saying that, you know, we, we need to be corrected ourselves. I think uh, uh, that we that there's a lot more that we can do as a body, and we're supposed mm -hmm. to be that community. The church is built as the community, that's where everything's supposed to take place. We're supposed to be able to come to that place and talk through sex and talk through problems. The Bible said uh, that they everybody brought and no one was without. Yes. You yes. know what I mean? And, and that's yeah, not yeah. money. That's everything, you know. And mm -hmm. so we distribute things properly and we hold the burdens uh, one to another. 
when the when the strong bad infirmity of the weak, then things work better. So considering that, that means now, yeah, now we got to do the outreach centers and so forth. Change, you go get me in trouble, man. These, these <laughs> but, uh, hey, 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 but, but, <laughs> the deal is, this is where I think the problem comes in at, uh, okay. is that a lot of the community centers, they're going to have to be 501 type of situations because there's yes. funding that has to take place. And when you yes. know, like I know, when you start going 501, uh, yes. even though it says that you're not a part of the system, it actually makes you a part of the system. Yes. So, yes. you know, yes. uh, regardless of, of how we want to look at it, at the end of the day, that's what it is. Because, yes. you know, and, and so somehow we got to figure out how to independently run these centers, which there's some yes. ministries now, some of these worship centers and stuff that has their own center. Or we're gonna have to come to a place where these uh, ministries will begin to fund a separate center that don't want to deal with. It's kind of like going and do a prison ministry, but you got some of the members that scared to go into prisons or yeah, don't need yeah, to go into yeah. prison. It's not their ministry, <laughs> yeah, okay? But yeah, you ain't gotta yeah. go. But send your money so we can gas up, so we can eat yeah, while yeah. down there and take, yeah. you know, yeah. things in, into there for the prisoners, and, and you're gonna get the same reward that we get, even though we went in that sense. And so accountability has to take place. Um, some way, somehow, because it's either that or the, the far spectrum to the other end where we're all, you know, doomed pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, man. But a hey, good word, man. Good word. Good word. But hey, 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 you gave a good word, man. You gave the truth, brother. That was a good word, man. Yeah. That was a good that's word. That's why I be scared of questions sometimes, man, because I know, this, <laughs> you know, it, 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 even though I'm like, I'm one of the pioneers of gospel hip hop, man, is what I'm kind of yeah. known for. And shouts out to my brother BBJ and, you know, uh, all these other artists that are out there, Lecrae, which came up under us, and, you know, all the artists, yeah. even before us, too, respectfully. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. uh, but, but that's one of the things that I fought with becoming who I am because. Uh, in my area, the south side of everything, uh, mm -hmm. I'm known for being one of the pioneers to break Christian rap music in uh, okay. and to, the, to the traditional mindsets of the, the traditional church settings and so forth. And in okay. doing that, you know, usually if I go and I minister at a church, you know, usually, you know, we kind of brown nose the pastor or whatever because you want to come back. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Most, most and blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. But for me, it was a little different. It was like, God, I'm not going anywhere. And, and and this is respectfully, you know, if you if you give me the mic, <laughs> I'm going to say what God says to say, you okay. know, and, and, and so forth. And I had to really get myself in a position. And that, that's why my music has uh, been successful as it is as well, because I sold over 50,000 of my own CDs out of my hand. Day. And so, and, but that's how I financed my Man. own. Ministry. And that's how I was speaking about the worship centers. Uh, or the centers that we, you were talking about as far as accountability. And this is how it brought accountability to me as one person uh, in doing ministry because I was able to finance. Well, I wasn't able, but you understand what I mean? God provided yeah. me a way to finance myself. I didn't have to worry about brown nosing because it didn't yeah. matter if you book me or not. I'm okay. Amen. Amen. You know, Amen. But if you give me a platform, I come in here to win souls and to change lives. So if yes. that means that means you get hit in the process, Pastor, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, I'm not going to go in with a target on him. I'm just saying yeah. I got to say what God tell me to say. And that's it. If you you trust me enough and you said you prayed to God and God told you to give me the the the, the uh the, he give me a bit the ability to come up and embrace the stage. I'm going to give it what God give me. It ain't going to come from me. It ain't going to be something I'm feeling emotionally. I petition God about what to say. And I got to I'm going to put it out there. I, Amen. True, Amen. Amen. You get me in trouble sometimes, but hey, if I'm in trouble with man, but I'm doing good with God, it's all good. Amen. Amen. Good word. Good word. Good word. Amen. Big prophet. Good Amen. word. Good word, brother. Hey, man, I want you to do something, man. I want you to finish this sentence for me, man. All right. God, God has always, God has always been there for me. God has always been there for you. Now, brother, I know, I know, you know, after living, I know there's been plenty of times, bro, but give me one good time that you can remember, man, in the back of your mind that you know most definitely it was God that came through. One of those times, man, when I was coming up, uh, when I was in, you know, out in the, in, on the block, man, selling drugs and begin to, uh, you know, make state claim of my, my, uh, uh, I want to say legacy, but it's not a legacy, <laughs> but <laughs> 
But well, you understand what I'm saying? My, yeah, yeah, my yeah, yeah. If, if, if you say, uh, you know, we used to get into, there was a lot of violence that was involved. And I remember one time uh, the guys came back to retaliate. And man, I was like 400 pounds around that time. And that's around the time when car, low rider cars was out. And my uncle had a little car and it was about done a night. And the guys that came up from behind the apartment building that we ran and man, they started, you know, shooting up the place and everything. And I was able to get down, man, and squeeze my 400 pound body under a Ooh. low rider car, but I couldn't Ooh. get all of my body under it. So my legs and stuff was hanging out and the guys, while they were shooting, I can see them from under the car. I can saw, I saw my cousin get shot in the back. They shot my buddy Tavis in the head upstairs. He lived, thank God. And, and they just came through wrecking havoc, but they was mm. all stepping on my leg and feet and all that. And they must have thought I was dead because any time they could have just pointed the gun under the car and killed me because I couldn't go nowhere. I was stuck. I was trapped. Nothing I could do. But God mm. must have made them think I was already dead or maybe they didn't even know who I was because, as I said, when they came through, it was right at the dust of dark. It was finna get dark. Maybe they couldn't make out what was going on. But I know they, I knew God, man, was saving me for a purpose even then. That woke me up to a lot right there. Hey, Amen. Well, woo, that's a good testimony. Well, you said you was 400 pounds. You can't get on the car. You I like, the car, man. I tried, like, I tried lifting it up, sliding my body under as much as I could. But, man, that whole side of that thigh was still out there, man. My leg. <laughs> it just well, was not going to. Even that, well, even 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 in the brink of of, of desperate of being desperate to get your body under there, man, I couldn't do it. But God boy, covered boy. me, protected, and blinded him to me. So yeah, hey, hey, amen, 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 brother. You well, you know God is good, boy. That that right there, boy. You know God is good. He made you invisible in a visible situation, brother. Ooh, that's powerful. Most definitely. I like most that. definitely, most that's definitely, right. brother. Hey, brother. Say, man, if you had to, your life had to be judged, man, on the last six hours of your life, man, would you think you would be going to heaven or to the lake of fire? fire oh, brother? I'm absolutely going to heaven. I can't take nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you said you absolutely. You already know, right? I'm absolutely going to heaven, brother. Absolutely. I got my ticket. In fact, I bought backup tickets, man. I'm in heaven for sure. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you know, and... Uh, well, you're right about that, bro. And, and that's 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 what a lot of think uh, people don't understand is, man, that once you give your life to Christ, yes, we are. We have already got our way into the internal life. Absolutely. Our thing is just it's, it's just maintaining until we transition, because a lot of people, they're thinking that, OK, you got to wait until you die to get into eternal life. No. Once you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, you are already into eternal life. You just got to hold on until you transition over to the next level. That the wow. Lord has for us, brother. Powerful. Most Powerful. definitely. Powerful. Most definitely. Most Powerful. definitely, brother. That's life changing. Hey, um, <laughs> thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Hey, um, um, brother Big Prophet. Man, what is yeah. your definition of love, man? <laughs> God. Real God. simple. <laughs> Real simple. God. God. Mm -hmm. God. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Good word. Good word. Hey, brother, do, do you would you happen to think, man, that um um some people can bring spirits, man? to cause uh, uh, chaos and havoc, man, in certain people's lives, man? Did you Absolutely. believe in it? In it? Okay. Go ahead. You know, I'm sorry. I'm gonna you no, 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 you, you're good. That's why I tell a lot of people, I said, man, you got to be real careful on who you allow into your into your space, man, because mm -hmm. in this day and time, man, we got we got spirits that's roaming this earth that's after God people, and they bold with it. Right. So that's right. why I ask a lot of people, man, you, you, do you really believe? Because some people don't believe. Some people believe in God, but they don't believe in the devil. Right, it's right. Just some people, but, but you got to know. Go it's ahead. almost impossible to do. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But still. So, uh, and, and you know, traditionally, I've heard things like that. A lot of people say, "Oh man, don't stop giving credit to the devil." This, that, and the third. Let me tell you something. My Bible. If you believe the Bible, you got to believe it all, right? <laughs> Amen. Uh, the Bible yeah. simply tells me. He said, "The the devil is as a roaring lion, seeking who yes. may devour." He said, and the Bible talks about how he's um uh, how he got kicked out of heaven right yeah so yeah. when he got yeah. kicked out of heaven he fell to the ground and now he's up walking around seeking whom he may devour yes you take me to the top of this apartment complex mm -hmm. or where my condo is and let me fall to the ground see if i get up and start walking <laughs> around like that uh, that right there shows me the devil got power so they always say devil ain't got yeah. no power okay yeah. okay all right. So, you know, play with him then, you know. So, you know, the, and, and another thing is you got to know your enemy. 
you 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 know we we do a lot of study on God. Those of us that do study, some some of us don't even do that. We're just yeah. be real. Um, yeah. You know, we claim God, but we don't know what salvation means. We don't know what, what none of these things mean. We just roll with the punches again. No relationship, uh, no yeah. knowledge at all. And, and I'm not not coming down on anybody. There's a lot of stuff I don't know either. But some yeah. of this basic yeah. stuff that you agree to, you should know about what you agree to. Otherwise, you really ain't agreed to it because you don't even understand what you agreed to. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah they, see, yeah, and that's 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 sec, that's Second Timothy two fifteen. Study absolutely. to show yourself approved, man. You absolutely. got to show yourself. You got to study to show yourself approved, man. Absolutely. Hey, um, um, brother, big prophet. If yes, you had sir. to tell, man, just say if you if you could look back, man, and tell your teenage self something that you has learned, some good advice for your teenage self as an adult, man. What would be a line, a sentence that you would give your teenage self? Love God, <laughs> stay humble. Love God and stay humble. That would probably be uh, my main thing. I would speak to myself. Trust God, I should say. And when I say when I say love, trust God, okay. stay humble. Trust God, stay humble. Because in trusting God, man, that that speaks volume. I, and I know that don't get nobody, you know, don't get it. Don't send no chills through your bones and nothing like that, but. Trusting God is a major key, you yes. know, um, and so you have to trust him for everything. I mean, everything, your relationship, you know, yeah. your walk, because we're born in the sin. So, I mean, if you don't it's, trust it's God, iniquity, yeah. absolutely. If you don't trust, who was it? Richard Pryor said on that movie, he said, you got to believe in something. I'm not believing <laughs> in myself. Yeah. You know, so I choose to believe God, man, and what he says. Uh, and if I'd have known that much earlier, man, life would be so much better if I was introduced that way from birth in the time when I was a sponge at birth all the way up. then I think things would have been a lot better for me because there's a lot of people uh, that has not have not made it because they never had the opportunity or. Oh, man. Thank it. That was my man, Big Prophet out of BM, Birmingham, Alabama. Hey, y'all, his interview was cut short due to technical difficulties. But his word of encouragement is to never take life for granted. At any moment, at any time, you can leave this earth. He said, be strong, be blessed, keep living, have faith in God, and continue moving forward. Hey, I cannot get out of here without offering somebody the Lord Jesus Christ. So for all y'all listeners out there, I was wondering if y'all could please do me a favor and just bow your head and repeat this blessed assurance after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. Right now, I turn from my sins and invite you into my heart and life. I'm going to trust you and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, man, all you got to do right now, man, is find you a faith-based church, man. Get yourself together, turn away from your sin, and God's going to guide you down the right path. Hey, I want y'all to stay tuned. Don't go nowhere. Next, we play my man, Big Prophet Hits. We got a song coming up. I want y'all to enjoy. Thanks for supporting me. God's love, God's blessings. Never forget, this too shall come to pass. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessing, blessing, blessing. Love and God is one in the same. Love ain't fortune, material, nor fame. Love ain't kissing, and love ain't to be. Misused by acts of sexual activity. Love ain't crafty, it ain't just sex. Love ain't hickeys on one another's neck. Love ain't a game, and love don't steal. Love is love, love is for real Love ain't poetry, poems, and a thrill Love ain't the means of a romantic meal Love is misused, proposed as a tool Don't let love into the hands of a fool Love is a gift, open that it's time Love ain't revenge for a friend, that's a crime Love ain't a toy, so don't play with love Love is to enjoy, you can't lay with love
whole lot more than a feeling. Love runs deep. Love is revealing. Love ain't do me and I'll do you back. Love don't come in no potluck sack. Love can't be used for just anything. Love ain't to be abused. Love is ordained. Love, love, love. Who you loving on? Love ain't falling asleep on the phone. Love ain't selfish. Love is not pride. Love is forever and love don't die. Love is just another name for hope when fulfilled. Love is when you're broke but you don't miss a meal. Love don't kill. Love is trust. And we love him because he first loved us. Love is when God gave his only begotten son. Love was obedient and then love hung. And love will be the end. What? Love replenished us from all of our sins. Love is God. And God is love. Jesus brought love when he ascended from above. Love is the act of one man's truth. Love is contained. Love is not loose. Love is not only one of God's attributes. It's a part of his nature. Love is the root. God's love is pure, holy, and demanding. Such love surpasses our power of understanding. Love is everlasting. And sacrificial, it's enduring to the end with no grounds for dismissal. That's brotherly love, love and peace and love and kindness. That's all walks of love, talks of love, free us from blindness. Love checks in, but don't check out. Love is what the chaos of the world is all about. Love is true, you can't blow me, love. I can't trust you because you don't show me love. Love is reaching out, love do speak. Love has a purpose, love is not weak. Love follows God for the reason he was sent. Love is like oil to the wheels of obedience. If it's about his love, we as a people will prevail. But without this love, there is no sequel, so we fail. God is love.